Welcome to another edition of Mark's Inspiration. Got the D-man here, Lacey, and I'm glad you could join me. Lacey was giving me a hard time because I don't always announce the D-man. Well, there it is, baby. You should go to Cancun with me. That's what you should do. Okay, <laughs> moving right along. Today, we're going to talk about what we spoke about yesterday. What men want from a woman in a relationship or in as a lover or in any kind of uh, interaction. What a man likes a woman to do for him and what you men should demand from a woman. You accept anything less than you're a beta. You're giving in. You're, you're being weak and she won't stay around with you long. She'll go find someone who is a real man. Okay. Understanding. Men want to know that you get them, and research suggests that feeling understood is an important part of a good relationship. She doesn't want to have to tell you what to do. She wants to know that you get it, that you understand. And if you don't get it, there are millions of YouTube videos out there, similar to mine, I watch them, that can tell you how to get it, what women like. Never listen to a woman tell you what she likes or what she wants or what she desires in a man because there's only about 1% of them that know what they really like, what they react to, what they're attracted to. They will tell you they want a man that takes them out to dinner and wines them, dines them, and treats them like a queen. Yeah, go try that. Go treat a woman like a queen, wine and dine her, and see how well that works for you. Okay, it'll work okay for the first couple of dates and she will become bored with you. And she won't even know why. So it doesn't work too well. Okay, here we go. They, they are often more logical and like to problem solve. Men. Yes, we are logical and we do like to solve problems. We are the one that solve the problems. If it wasn't for us, we wouldn't live in this great country we live in today. We came here. We sailed over on the ships when the earth was supposedly flat and Everyone was telling us we would fall off the edge, but hey, here we are. We didn't fall off the flat earth. And lo and behold, it's round. Isn't that amazing? If we would have listened to our women, we would have never left the shores of Europe because they didn't want us to go because we might not come back. But you're a man. Take some risks. Quit being so damn safe. Safety will kill you. Safety kills your life, your dreams, your hope. Okay. This has high value and creates balance between women who are generally more emotional and in touch with their feelings. Yes, they are. One of the ways you can both show that you understand each other is by making a commitment to talk daily together. Plan a daily dialogue exercise where you take 20 minutes to ask each other positive questions. This sounds like psychobabble counselor stuff. I'm not saying that this isn't logically a good idea, and I do believe you should communicate with your woman, but to set it down as a structured thing may or may not work. All this needs to become natural for you as a man, all right? You need to lead these things, but not so much to where you, how do I say, you need to lead it to these um, con conclusions or these um, solutions to what could be potential problems. Okay, this could, in, this could include things about what attracts you to one another. Man, you're really getting into emotions and feelings there, and I think it's a mistake if you start talking to your woman about that. Your favorite date together or what your partner's favorite quality is. I agree to some of that, but you got to be careful with some of that. You got to be really cautious about that. Women don't want to know everything about you. If there is no mystery, she'll find a man that has a little mystery. Even if you're married or been going together for years, the relationship will get stale if she becomes too sure of you and knows you too well. You got to be adventurous, man. You got to be always thinking about something exciting you want to do. And she doesn't need to know what that is all the time, okay? I'm not telling you to be a stoic rock. I'm just telling you that there's things about yourself that you need to keep to yourself and only share with your men friends. 
And that's what she wants. She doesn't want to know everything about you. She doesn't want you coming home and sharing your feelings and, and just laying your emotions out there on the table. She doesn't want that. Okay? She's not your mommy. Appreciation and affirmation. Most guys like to be patted on the back. Yeah, I kind of like it. <laughs> I do it to myself most of the time. <laughs> One way to do this is by complimenting your husband often. I'm not sure if this written if this is written by a man or a woman. Rather than overdoing it, make sure it's genuine and sporadic throughout the week. Yes, I love compliments. Okay. Do simple things like kiss him and tell him you really admire him as a person. Yeah, we like that. Let your husband know you appreciate how hard he works. We like that too. But you know what? Really, that's just expected of you as a man. That's your job. Don't a woman just thinks that's what you're supposed to do. Few women will show you they appreciate that. They just think, well, that's what you're supposed to do. I remember this girl I went out with one time, and I was taking care of her. And we had a pretty good relationship, and I asked her to do something extra for me. And uh, she acted like, and I said, well, man, I take care of you. I do this, I do that. And she said, well, you're the man. That's what you're supposed to do. Now, that is not unusual. Most women view men that way. If you're married to a woman or you're in a living with a woman or you're in a relationship with them, they expect you to take care of them. I mean, in the U.S., it's a little different now. Now, 100 years ago, it wasn't different here. But really, deep down subconsciously, they want a man who can take care of them, even if they're making a lot of money and they can take care of themselves financially. So you need to remember that. It's very important. Tell your husband how good he looks in his shirt. Yeah, we like that. Thank him for how he takes care of the family. Yes, we like that too. But once again, don't expect this praise. If you got a woman that praises you for that, you're very fortunate. Most women just look at you like that's your job. That's what you're supposed to do. Why should you expect any praise or thanks for it? But we do. We like it, okay? So he's right there or she's right, whoever wrote this. Acceptance. We all want to be accepted for who we are and don't want others to try to change us. Men are often hurt and angered when their wives try to change them. And all women will try to beta -tize you. They will try to change you. They will try to get you to do what they want you to do and become the man they want you to become. Even though if you become that man, they will lose attraction for you and they won't know why. Okay, be the man she fell in love with, and that is the man that she will stay in love with. It's simple, isn't it? In particular, if it concerns their health and safety, it is understandable that superficial characteristics aren't necessary to bring up. Okay, don't be hacking on your man. Don't have a woman that picks you apart. If she does, walk away from her. You can show how much you accept your husband for who he is right now by committing to agree to disagree in arguments. Committing to agree to disagree, okay. Getting comfortable with being different from our partner. Learning how we can accept ourselves so we can accept our husbands. Men, you just need to know this stuff. Here's the deal. You need to learn all this. You need to know what you need from a woman if she's going to be in your life on an intimate level, a romantic relationship, because you've got to have some boundaries. You allow someone in your life that isn't up to par, so to speak, she will drag you down. How do I know that? I've been drugged down before because I allowed someone in my life that wasn't, how would I say, moving in the same direction that I was. So she pulled me down. Whose fault was that? Hers? No, that was my fault. I allowed that to happen by coming too emotionally involved before I vetted her. And then when she started crossing the lines, I started seeing the red flags, I made excuses for it, and eventually I had to walk away from her, but I could have saved myself a lot of uh, unneeded uh, anguish. <laughs> but then again, I learned so much from that, so how can I say that, that that was a mistake not to walk away sooner? It actually wasn't. But now, from what I learned from that, I would walk away sooner. Because I know that people aren't going to change unless they change for themselves. They are unable to. But you can change and you can become the man 
that all women want to be with and all men want to be like. But only you can do the work. No one can do your push-ups for you. Remember that. Very important. Oh, yes. Letting go when it comes to different activities, opinions, or politics. Seeing his flaws and loving him anyway. I mean, it, everybody's got flaws, okay? She's going to have flaws. You're going to have flaws. All right? You got to overlook some of these. But in the early stages of the relationship, it depends, you know, if she's getting high and smoking weed all day and you're not a pot smoker or a drinker, that may be something that you two might disagree on that could cause problems down the road, okay? So you may not be uh, congruent, or you may not be uh, vibing on the same level, for lack of a better way to say it. So that might be a red flag for you that you need to step back from that, or that's not really the kind of girl that you want, and maybe you're not the kind of man that she could get along with either. That's a big uh, red flag there, okay? Okay, and on the other hand, if you're a big drinker and she's not, uh, that could cause problems also. Uh, too much alcohol in a relationship or drugs or any of that can really cause problems because it's hard for you to connect with someone. It's hard for you to bond with someone because the alcohol or the drugs can become kind of like your lover and your first go-to when things go bad. And it's kind of a false... How do I say? I would have to say it's kind of a false god because it gives you the ability to, to, to shut off your emotions. And as a man, you need to learn how to control your emotions. I'm not telling you not to feel your emotions. It's okay to hate. It's okay to anger. It's okay to be happy, to be sad. All that's okay to feel that emotion initially, but it's what you do with it. It's the actions you take from that emotion, if you take any. And as far as hate and anger and resentment goes, my old mentor told me, resentment eats up the container it's stored in. So if you get angry at someone and you initially hate them, that's okay. That's a normal response. But if at the end of the day or two days or three weeks or six months or years later, every time you think about that, you just get angry and it just makes you mad, so to speak, you got a problem. You need to do something with that. You need to let that go because it's killing you. It's like drinking poison and, and expecting the other person to die. So that's when emotions can, or sadness is the same thing. It's normal to grieve when someone you love uh, has passed on. My mom and dad passed on in the last seven or eight years, and, and I grieved about that. Sometimes I still grieve about my mother being gone. Um, but that's okay. It doesn't, I accept that, and as I grieve, I appreciate it, and I, I, I appreciate what my parents did for me. I feel, it's hard to explain, but in the sadness, there's a, a gratitude also. So when it initially starts out as sadness, it, it, come, it becomes gratitude if you've made peace with your parents before they passed, which I would recommend you do that regardless of how terrible you think they were, because you may find as, they, as time goes on after they pass that they were much better parents than what you perceived them to be. You're here, aren't, they? aren't you? You made it. You're alive because of them. Even if they were vicious and mean at times. We can all be vicious and mean at times. They did the best they could. If you had some idea of how they were raised, if you can find out, you may be more understanding of the defects that your parents had and a, and a little more forgiving because that forgiveness helps you. It doesn't help them. It helps you. If you want to walk in power, you got to get rid of this resentment and anger. Okay, back to the subject. I'm getting off on a rabbit trail here. All right. Less chatter. If your husband is tired, involved with a project, or just generally isn't up for a chat, don't push it. Women can be especially chatty sometimes, so it's important to carve out time to talk to your husband. Consider expressing yourself in additional ways to your friends, other family members, or through alternative ways like art, journaling, and online forums. You definitely don't want a relationship where you never talk, talk. Communication is important, so when you really want to chat and get intimate, check in with him to see if he's up for it. If he's busy, you may need to schedule some time with him so you two can get back on track. Yeah, leave him the hell alone. If he's doing something, if he's pursuing his goal, his mission, and his purpose, leave him alone. 
That's what he's supposed to do. He does that to pr provide for the family, for you, for everyone. That is what he needs to be doing if he's being a man. But women will try to pull you away from that. They certainly will. And if they do, then that shows a weakness. That shows them that, hey, this guy it can actually be pulled away from his purpose, his mission, his goals, which is what supports us as a family. If he can be pulled away that easily, he doesn't have the strength that I thought he had when I met him. And they will lose attraction for you. Always, 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 men, focus on your goals and your mission first and foremost. You got to be able to walk away from her, your kids, and everything if need be. Okay, I've done it. I've had to do it. I've done it more than once. Okay, it's not easy. It's difficult. But the men of old, when they sailed away on ships, did they think that, did they know if they were going to come back or not? No, they didn't. What about the great adventurers, the great warriors? They would go out to battle for years, six, seven, eight, ten years on a campaign. Their wives and kids stayed at home. These men left their families and their kids, everyone, for their mission, for their purpose, for their goal. These men were strong. Be like those men. If you got to go, go. Do what you need to do. And when you take care of yourself, your mission, your purpose, your family and everything else will be taken care of. Their protection and provision will be a byproduct of you being the man that you need to be. Be a man. Okay? I hope this has helped you. Share it with a friend. And if you would like to get my help personally, Mark's Inspirational Guidance at gmail.com. Smash that like button. Subscribe. And hit the notification bell. Thanks for joining me. See ya.